All right, let's do this. Uh, we would normally now jump to Super Chats, but I want to do one more segment because I've, I've been sitting on the story and it's like a week old now, but I really want to talk about it. It has very little to do with politics and everything to do with just the absurdity of the modern political world. Ladies and gentlemen, Vanderbilt players were crying during Sarah Fuller's 30-yard kick. This is an actual news story. Let me break it down for you. Sarah Fuller is the first woman to play in, what is it, Power 5, I think it's called? Mm -hmm. I'm not a big football fan, so I don't know a whole lot about what this means. Changing the game, Sarah Fuller became the first woman to play in a Power 5 college football game. The team she's on, Vanderbilt, lost 41-0. to zero. She came out in the second half and did, uh, uh, she kicked, and mm -hmm. kicked like between 20 and 30 yards, and then they ended up losing. I tweeted about this. And I didn't say anything negative because I was just like, I was like, his, history was made. For, they, uh, you know, the first woman to, to, to play in a Power 5 game loses 41-0. to zero. She kicked 30 yards. And people were trying to convince me, like say to me, she, she, it, was, it, was, it was a squib kick. It was on purpose, mm -hmm. right? Then we, got, then we got more news. This is the craziest thing. Vanderbilt players consider opting out of final game at Georgia, another kicker joining team. After this fiasco, players actually said that they wouldn't play in another game. They were not going to do it. Seems like, I don't know if this team thought, hey, we'll just put the first female kicker on to get all this good social justice PR, but it resulted in the players actually crying. So this is the story from the Daily Caller. They say, Vanderbilt players were apparently emotional during Sarah Fuller's kick against Missouri. Okay, maybe they were crying because with tears of joy, so right? Happy. They were just crying watching this historic moment. Sure. During the 41-0 blowout loss, Fuller became the first woman to play in a major college football game. When she kicked the start of the second half, the ball went a staggering 30 yards. There were some people on the sideline tearing up, quarterback Mike Wright said during a game, during a, during a Saturday morning college game day segment on Fuller's kick. As hard as that might be to believe, I can promise that I'm not making this up. You can watch the video below. It used to be an insult, yada yada. When is this nonsense going to end, they say. This is nothing more than a PR stunt, which didn't save Derek Mason's job. And now we're out here talking about players crying. Are you kidding me? This can't possibly be real. From the way people talk about Fuller's kick, you'd think she was the first woman to walk on the moon. So it sounds like they're actually saying they were crying tears of joy, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean it's it's incredibly silly. <laughs> yes. And patronizing. <laughs> yes. And, I mean, any meaningful... I don't know. I mean, there's record low testosterone out there. And it keeps going down. So. Remember the the try guys from BuzzFeed? Yes. Remember oh that segment? Gosh. They got they <laughs> got you know, you know this? Sorry, tested. Yeah, go ahead. So uh, so there were four guys at uh, BuzzFeed, and they got their T levels tested, and they were all oh, as like eighty year old men. I could have told levels. you that just looking at them though. I mean, to be fair. super low, and it's kind of it's kind of crazy. I wonder is there like. What's going on? There's been a you progressive know? decline in testosterone that's been tested Why, throughout the decades. There's many theories out there. There's many different explanations. Some people are talking about microplastics. Some people are talking about poor diet. Some people are talking about... Birth control in the water. Birth control in the water, which is another thing. Some people are talking about the frogs right, deciding right. to change their the orientation. Turn the freaking frogs yeah, gay. Yes. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but yes, <laughs> that, that's exactly what's been happening. So is there's many different... You? Is that going to derank you? I don't know, probably. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. They're going to think it was actually Alex Jones. They're going to be like, we caught it. it did Somebody. Just like Alex. No, no, but, I'm just doing an impersonation. But this is a serious issue because reproductivity of human beings is going down dramatically. So people. Uh, well, so what does that have to do with the, the, the kick well, in the football? Well, we just game. made a comment about the testosterone issue, and yeah. maybe oh. they were crying for real yeah. because yeah. they no, were I think emotional. When I read that, I thought they were crying because like their careers are now destroyed. Yeah, they're now losers on a losing team because of this PR stunt well, to put they, a woman on the team. They lost forty-one to zero. You guys know? Yeah. I mean, maybe you're not familiar with this. Like, there was some some Chicago White Sox owner who had his team like send out a six-year-old or something to bat in the in a baseball game really he walked because the small strike zone <laughs> <laughs> is that real that's real like look at it i think it's eddie guidel g-a-e-d-e-l i really think that's right now. but like i know the owner is bill veck see if i see if i got the name right that's amazing he was I, six I years always old. find that things like Eddie that Guidel, kind of patronizing. I got it. Look at that. Man, my memory's good. Damn. He was he was uh, the world's smallest player. How he was cute. five foot six inches. No, no, no. That's Rizzuto. Click on the click on the link. Oh. This Eddie Guidel? Oh. Yeah, there he is. Oh wow, look at that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's real. I love it. That's real. That happened. Oh wow, but he wasn't six years old. Uh, that, I'm not sure how old he was when he played. He's just a, a little person. No, no, no. He was a child. He was a child. He was a child. He gained recognition in the second game of the St. Louis Browns doubleheader, weighing sixty pounds and staying at three foot seven inches. 
He became the shortest player in history of the major leagues. Oh no, you're right. I guess I guess you're right. He was actually. He uh, looks like a child. Yeah, smart I'm play curious. though. Smart yeah. play. Yeah. Tiny strike zone, hard to hard to get that. He's gonna and he walks. <laughs> yeah, he he walks. Uh, so okay, I, so I, that's what I didn't remember correctly. So but what yeah. is, what is the strategic advantage of having a female kicker? There there isn't one, but I, I guess <laughs> there's not. Buzzfeed's gonna like you. I yeah. was I yeah, was thinking right. it's like you know fifty years ago people recognized this sort of thing as like a ridiculous stunt, and it's like. Well, she, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you the reason I want to talk about this is because I said I think like three years ago, when like a lot of video game and movie stuff was happening. I said it's only a matter of time before they just change the rules to mandate women in major league sports. Yep. Like, why not? The rules are arbitrary, right? We could, we could, we could raise the basketball uh, uh, nets five feet. We just agree to do it. Then no more dunking or something. Right? People might still be able to dunk, I guess. But we could just say, okay, new rule change. So what if right now everyone just said, okay, new rule change. Players have to be half women, half men. Why not? Well, um, is the NBA going to be diverse? See- then you just see a yeah. bunch of, I mean, there would be a huge market for uh, trans women. Yep. That's what happened. Well, I, I said back then there that is. it's only a matter of time before there are diversity demands in major league sports. If the rules can be changed by people, then there's no reason they can't have a rule saying the easiest way to get women in major league sports is just to mandate that they're there. It's the it's, it's same thing as any diversity quota. It's not about your, your, your merit. It's about making sure there's representation in the game, right? There I mean, you, I, you this, know, I would have I would have said Democrats wouldn't do that, but they've done a lot of crazy things in yes. the past few years. So but this I, already happens in mainstream society. In the corporate world, this already exactly. exists. Yeah. So why wouldn't it exist in the NBA? And, and, and I think it's going to. Yeah. It's absolutely no, going to. to. They'll get They're, their bones broken. Yeah. Well, perhaps, perhaps. Or perhaps you're a bigot, Ian. No, I'm talking about <laughs> physiology. You got to be. You got to no, be. Exist every anymore. compassionate. Can, 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 Look, Will, like, can you hear this bigot? Everyone knows there's no difference just, at I'm just all. I'm struck by the fact that he's not recognizing the impact of discourse on physiology. Yeah. Like, <laughs> that's true. We can, <laughs> we can talk people to be the same. That's right. It's well, true. no, no, no. But think about this. Think about this. The, the, there's no rule stopping women from playing in any major league sport. They just don't win. When they mm-hmm. try out, they, like, you know, she kicked 30 yards. She didn't kick 70. I, so I looked it up. I don't know anything about football. And they said a good, a good you know, kick is 70 yards. She, she might got, have been kicking onside, though, because they were down, down so far. Was that the case? Yeah, well, some, if some people they're down 25 points at the beginning of the second half, and, and she, she might kick an onside kick. kick. That, that might and, be and, and some people said it was a squib kick, intentionally. Which is kick. an onside, yeah. yeah so she yeah. might be a great kicker. Yeah. yeah. For a woman. But so, so for, the, for the point I'm making is, the point I'm making is, look, we make up the rules of the game. Right now, the rules are the best of the best are chosen by the managers and the, and the, and the, and the owners for who's going to be on the team. We could simply just say, yeah, exactly. So yeah. Question, diversity over meritocracy. As men are losing testosterone, are women getting more beastly? I don't know. Well, well, I don't know about naturally. Like, men are naturally losing testosterone. Yeah, like, the, the BuzzFeed guys are a good example of that. But I think that might be because they're not exercising. Yeah. It's really, you know, look, guys used to have to go and chop lumber. True. Now they sit at their desks and eat Doritos and, and drink Mountain Dew. You yeah, know, COVID they, they, was not good for my waistline. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody's. But uh, uh, maybe maybe with more women getting in, in sports and things like that, maybe we'll see an increase over time. But uh, look, the point I'm saying is you, you mentioned in corporations, we already have the diversity quotas. You look at California now, they passed that law where they got a what is, what is mandatory, it? Cal- yeah, man, it, mandatory board member must be like female or, or yeah. you know, you know, minority or whatever. Why not in major league sports? And I'm not saying I'm not saying why not in the sense of I'm advocating for it. I'm saying why wouldn't they do it? They will it's be doing happen. it, and you're calling it out, and we're going to see in a few months, maybe even a, even a few years, just these kind of patronizing no representation of here we are. It's like we're all equal. Remember, we're you, you, all the same. Everyone gets an award. I don't know. I mean, you might end up. It, it just it might be a bridge too far, right? Like you you get the sense that people were able to do a lot of things, like. I want you to think about this. Like, I wonder how long the mass kneeling would have lasted in a world where the, ever, the crowds were still at the arenas, right, after George Floyd. There's a sense where they could get away with it because there was no audience to boo. I wonder how long people would do that if there was systematic yeah. booing. Well, look what happened you know? to the NBA and their record low ratings mm-hmm. with them politicizing right. this and literally putting Black Lives Matter on the basketball court. And then they polled people. It was a Hill Harris X, and they found that most people said, I can't stand the politics. Yeah. So they're not watching anymore. Well, I watched one game, and it was just during the timeouts, during the interviews, any kind of patronizing, any kind of virtual signal they could put out, they put out there as much as they could. So what you're saying, I think, is going to come true. It's only going to be a matter of time, and uh, it's trendy. It's cool, Will. you got to get with the times. Yeah, that's why I'm a conservative. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you don't have to do that. It's going to come down to uh, clapter, right? What we're going to see is 
people are going to be watching sports and they're not going to care about touchdowns or scores. They're going to care about representation of people. So it's like that episode of South Park where they had Sarcastable. Mm-hmm. where football was too rough. So then it turned into a game of tag. And then there was like them chasing balloons around and wearing bras. And it was because Randy was like, okay, fine. Like, it's too rough. Why don't we just have the kids chase balloons instead, I guess. Okay. And they're like, okay, that's a good idea. Oh, okay. Then why not have them wear bras while they do it? And they're like, okay, let's do it. And they did it. And then the game became just ridiculous nonsense. And then they didn't realize, like, they were like, I don't know if I'm being sarcastic anymore. Nothing makes sense. Everything's broken. <sighs> but I think, I think that's where we're going we're gonna to get to. We're going to start seeing a bunch of these, you know, political. If, if cult- you did, if you had like a force fed men and women on football field together, you'd eventually get like a group of rogue dudes that are huge and beast that would just go start their own league. I think, you know, you know what I, I, I was reading that we should just let everybody take whatever drugs they want. Well, in I'm terms into of that. performance enhancement. No, I'm just kidding. And just, who, was it Joe Rogan talking about this? Somebody was talking Probably. about it. Like, <laughs> where they were like, just let everybody take whatever drugs they want, and then you'll have gigantic monsters just running on the field. Like steroids. Like, yeah, just everything. Just, you know, their heart rate's like 250 resting, and they're like, run, running, you know, 30 miles an hour. Just, just the craziest all out. Barry Bonds was roided out. A lot of, <laughs> a lot of <laughs> athletes have been seriously <laughs> steroided out, and they just, we just didn't know about it. Yeah. 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 Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. We do the show live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. So come back to check us out when we go live. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. And we are also available on all podcast platforms for free. If you want to listen to us there, thanks for hanging out and we will see you all next time.